thanks for tuning in to another video guys um, just wanted to do a quick little announcement uh, before I got started into the actual fly um, there is a giveaway coming uh, no better way to say it uh, it's gonna be in collaboration with another phenomenal fly tire um, we're not going to give away any names or anything quite yet uh, things aren't 100 percent finalized but uh, you're looking at <clears throat> probably mid early to mid february um just waiting for a couple milestones to happen but stay tuned it's going to be a great great giveaway and um yeah so be sure to be sure to check it out on instagram um, if you're not already following, it's at Trout Freak, and um, yeah, super stoked, super stoked to get that one going. Uh, so let's get into this fly here. So this is a streaking caddis, as you can tell from the thumbnail, and one of my favorite patterns uh, to tie. They're kind of fun because they're on the borderline of almost dangerous, and uh, at the end is is probably the most dangerous part so um, if you want to just fast forward to that I mean, feel free to go ahead but I assume you're here to learn how to tie a fly um, so let's stick let's get started in the vise I have a size 12 sedge sedge dry hook and that's the FW 530 from Arex and for my thread I'm just going to be using some UTC 70 denier in the color tan uh, now to get started I'm just going to start I'd say about a hook eyes, maybe two away. And I use that as my reference point um, to basically stop, to stop where I'm gonna end my dubbing um, because I want a nice healthy head on that. So I'm just gonna go down and I'm gonna wind my thread down in, just into the bend of the hook there. Um, so the streaking caddis is essentially just a large adult caddis, um, and if you if you've ever seen them, they are pretty large. Obviously, range in sizes like every other insect out there. Um, so I'll tie these in sizes eight, ten, uh, and twelves. And the I guess the most significant part of this fly is obviously the wing. These adult caddises have very, very large wings. So I'm just going to be tying on a really, really short and tight noodle. Uh, the tight noodle is because I'm trying to limit the amount of water that the dubbing absorbs over time. I don't want it to absorb water. So I'm keeping the noodle really tight. And then another key feature of this insect is a really sort of um, big and thick body. I think in traditional videos, um, <clears throat> they refer to it more like a cigar shaped body. So it's, it is pretty hefty if you're used to tying smaller nymphs um, or dry flies. It's, it's quite different in comparison. So I am going to stop my dubbing where I started my thread, right? And that's why I started my thread where I did. And then because I want a thicker body, I'm going to continue adding some dubbing. Now, I could have, I mean, a lot of people might be like, why well, didn't you just add more dubbing or make a longer noodle? I mean, I could have. Um, I'm just, I'm not good with having too much length between my hook and the end of my bobbin. Um, I just, I don't have much control. So I just keep it short and I'll just add dubbing as I see fit. You can see now it's really starting to beef up.
And there we go. Now we're ready for our wing <clears throat> and the wing, um, I do it, I do it twice. So if you've seen another video, the one that I typically reference is uh, Barry from the Feather Bender. I mean, he's quite adamant on, you know, you should have one stack of deer hair that does the wing and the head at the same time. I agree with him. Um, if I did it exactly to his style, I do it slightly different um, because I like to have my heads quite compressed with that deer hair. So I like to treat it almost like a streamer pattern um, that uses deer hair where I'll have it on and then I'll really compress the hairs together, um, trim it really nice and short and it gives it a, a ton of buoyancy. I don't want it to have a spongy type of head. Um, and this is, you know, just for reference sake, um, here's one I tied earlier and you can see how compressed that head, you can almost, you can barely tell that it's actually deer hair. Um, that's how compressed it is. So that's what we're going to try to achieve. Um, so I've pre-stacked some hair here to try to save you from all the desk stumps. We'll see how well I achieve that goal. And I think the amount of uh, of deer hair you use should be quite a bit, usually more than what you would think. Um, <clears throat> and just because of, again, these wings are what makes this insect. So you wanna have a nice big wing on here. And I'm just gonna expose those a bit. And then they're quite long. So I'm gonna make sure that they surpass the hook bend there. And then once I have that measurement, I'm gonna transfer it to my left hand and hold it there like that. <clears throat> the one trick that the feather bender does, Barry, which is phenomenal, is you know you typically do two wraps and then cinch down. Well, on his first wrap, he'll bring that thread around once and then leave it on top of the hook shank, do a second wrap and then cinch down. That is a tremendous, phenomenal method to keep your deer hair or elk hair right on top of the hook shank. So I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna counter spin my thread and I'm gonna go around once. Try my best to stay on top of that hook shank. And I'm gonna go around twice. And now I'm gonna cinch down And I'm gonna go through one more time, <clears throat> excuse me, and cinch down again. So I'm like on the, right on sort of that border of my thread is about to snap. And that takes practice. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to very lightly Preen these, these tag ends out and I'm going to work my way to the front of the fly with my thread. And then once I'm there, <clears throat> because I'm going to compress the fibers, I want to give it an anchor with my left, with my left hand. Because if I just start to push back, I mean, I risk pushing the dubbing back, the wing back, and just messing up the whole fly. So I will, with my left hand, pinch and create that anchor point, and then I'll compress the fibers back. And that'll free up a few millimeters on the hook shank. And once I have that,
ready to go. So I'm just gonna need a drink of water here. I swear it's water. So now you can see I have quite a bit of space still between my last stack and the eye of the hook there. So I'm gonna grab a little bit more of deer hair. And actually, while I'm cleaning this one up, just to not bore you guys too much, I um, found this extremely odd when using deer hair or elk hair. Man, it was so frustrating sometimes when you try so hard to clean it up, stack it, and then you get all those nasty you know, butt ends on the other side. So when you're trying to tie in a nice wing, it just, it never seemed to happen. And I'm like, what am I doing wrong? Why is it, my deer is not bad. Like, I mean, I have some of the best deer here now, finally. Um, <clears throat> what am I doing wrong? So I figured it out, finally. And I think I'm gonna do a separate video because my God, that was driving me insane. So I'm just stacking that a bit, um, just to align it a little bit more after that rough cleaning. <clears throat> you don't really need, you don't really need to because we're gonna cut off the tips anyway. We don't need them for this section of the fly. So I'm cutting off the tips of the deer hair. Keeping them nice and straight. And now you're gonna find your midway point because we wanna tie in that midpoint. So I'm just gonna tuck it in there, hold it with my left. And this time we're gonna do, we're actually gonna spin it. We're not going to do the same method we did before. So I'm going to do two loose wraps. And then as I pull down, I'm just going to let go of my left and it's going to start to spin around the hook shank. And then I'm going to carefully work my way towards the hook, the eye of the hook. And now you can see it's kind of buried. So I need to expose it again. So again, anchoring it with my left and kind of pushing them back. Now that I can see the eye of the hook, work my thread to the front. Push them back just a little bit more. And I like to, I'm trying really hard here to have a clean, a clean area by my hook eye. <clears throat> now, we're ready for a whip finish. Um, I use this half hitch tool. Um, it comes in a couple different sizes. I have three of them for the different hook uh, hook sizes. Um, I like using this tool on the smaller on these smaller patterns that use hair um, because it allows me to push that hair back and also put in my knots. So with the half hitches you want a minimum of two. And a 
third one if you're a little paranoid like myself. I think one of the toughest challenges with the deer and elk hair stuff is, um, well, at least for me anyway, is not being able to really see what you're doing half the time. You know, even just cutting off that thread is a little bit of a challenge. So that's ready. We're going to give it a quick brush out and that's just to get any, any loose or trapped fibers, I should say, um, during that entire process. Get a little bit loose. Now we're ready for the fun stuff, the scary stuff. So I'm gonna start on the underside of the fly and I wanna basically I need to expose that hook gap, right? That's what, this gap is where you set your hook. So you don't want that covered in any way. Now keep in mind as well, this is a dry, so it will be sitting on the water surface. So um, you do want the bottom to be flat. So it sits flat on the water. So I'm just trying to see where my hook eye is. And again, if you're a little bit nervous, always start shorter actually i'm just going to move my waist bin over or else my wife is going to yell at me because i trek the deer and the deer hair throughout the entire house so start shorter um and then you can get a bit more aggressive with your cuts i always start shorter and then once I'm able to see a little bit more of what I'm working with, I'll get more aggressive. Um, this is an area I think that most fly tires are probably scared of. Um, Gunner has an awesome video where he helped me get through the fear of cutting too much, right? Because you, you worked so hard. I mean, we've, I don't know how long we've been tying for now. It's going on, what, 18 minutes? And basically, take your time. And you don't want to cut too much too soon. You can always cut more, but if you mess up the first time, you're dead in the water. And it's one of those things too, it just takes practice. The more you do, the more comfortable you'll get. Still something that I battle with. So if I can do it, you can do it. Gunner also has another awesome trick where <clears throat> we're at that stage now where we're getting into like this wing. And I'm scared. I don't I don't want to cut my wing more. Um, so we want to kind of separate these, and he just says simply grab a bodkin and you can separate them a little bit easier. I mean, you're probably gonna cut some of the wing, but at least it's not gonna be a huge chunk. See, so now I can actually bring this wing down manually. And I can make some nice cuts.
Having a good pair of scissors also helps. Now, if you know how to tie in deer hair, please, I mean, just fast forward it till more around the end there. Um, but we're getting to the fun stuff soon. This used to be the scary part for me, but the next part, <laughs> man, I've, I've really messed them up on the next part. So just cleaning up the eye of the hook here a bit. And now, I mean, this is pretty much ready to fish if you want to. But I'm a stickler and I could probably trim this for another few hours if I wanted to. But we don't have that luxury, we're doing a video. Um, so what I do next is kind of when I have that rough shape, um, I'm actually going to grab a razor blade. I know some of you are thinking, man, for a streaking caddis? Yeah, that's, yeah, for a streaking caddis, I'll go with a razor blade. And I'm just going to just, just shape it a bit more. A bit more round at the top, a bit more round on the sides and then a little bit more flatter on the bottom. Now you don't have to get too crazy with this step. Because the next step will kind of take out any imperfections. All right, so that's not looking too bad. I, I've done it better before, but let's move on. So here is the fun stuff. Yeah. So I have literally lit entire flies on fire before. Um, so you just want to be careful. So first tip is do not ignite your lighter right underneath the fly. That'll be my mistake number one. And tip number two is protect your wing with your fingers. Okay, so what we're gonna do is simply we're gonna ignite and we're just gonna come close and just kind of just touch, just touch the hair all around. So I'm gonna protect my wings, lighter up, and just touch it and protect your wings no matter what, like even on the awkward angles, even on the underside. On every singe, protect your wing. And as you're doing this, it actually helps shape that wing. So we want that wing a little bit flatter, lying kind of low on the body. Um, and this step helps with that. Whoa, that was close. There we go. See, look how, look how much nicer that wing is, is riding now. All right, so last step, I mean, I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna get carried away. Um, grab your bodkin again. I like to use it because it has a round edge. If you use something more aggressive, like the edge of your scissors, um, you, you may just start chopping away at that hair again, which we don't want. So to be on the safe side, um, grab your bodkin and you're gonna just brush away this soot Soot, that's what it's called, right? Is that the right word? Soot? Soot or soot? I don't know. I ain't no speaking English. Soot. 
soot. I think it's soot. So this one actually didn't turn out too darn bad. I was really nervous for this video because I, I was like, man, I'm going to do this video like 14 times before it gets published because of just the different, the different dangers, right? <laughs> From cutting, cutting off too much, cutting off the wing. Again, it just takes practice, guys. So that's not too shabby. And now you can come in here. I mean, we're, we're done. But I can come in here and really just start to shape it. I kind of want that cigar shaped body to really come out. So I'm just trimming the underside here. So it looks like that. Hopefully you guys can see that on the camera. And the eye of the hook is nice, free and clear. That's it folks. That is my streaking caddis. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had some a little bit of entertainment and watching me almost light this thing on fire. And most importantly, I hope you give it a shot. I hope you try it. And thanks for watching and hope you tune into the next one. Cheers.